into the oceans every week simply by doing your laundry. Every one of you. Because when we wash our clothes, especially if we wash synthetic fibers, millions of tiny microfibers are released into our world water supply that eventually ends up in the ocean. 35% of all microplastics in our ocean is actually microfibers, is actually microfibers from your clothes. And scientists agree on that. It's 35%. 55% is tires. And it doesn't look like we're going to do something about that, because even if we go completely to electric cars, they'll still have tires. And the rest is urban dust, and a little bit is cosmetics. So 35%, think about it, that we can actually stop. The washing machine is not the source. Fashion is but it's a very good choke point of where we can stop this insane pollution. I'm not going to talk about microfibers being an environmental pollutant and health hazard, because there have been speakers far more competent than I am talking about that today. And here's the little water bug, Daphnia, who already had some exposure today, public exposure. Here you can see she had red microfibers for lunch. You can see the red little thing. And this is how microfibers work their way up through our food chain and end up on our plates. My daughter, she says it very vividly, we eat each other's underwear. And it's true. Thank God it's washed. So, how did I end up in this? I'm a lawyer. And what does spirulina have to do with it? So, I was a lawyer with a corporate career, and I had an industrial client who had problems with authorities because of their wastewater. So they asked me to put together a team of experts to solve the matter. And this is how I met our chief engineer today in Planet Hair, Hakim. At the same time, a friend of mine wanted to design a home-grown spirulina kit. She's a superfood junkie. And if you want to actually eat the spirulina you grow, you have to filter the water in which it grows. So she asked me if I could ask the same team to design a filter for her. And I did, and we did. So while all this was going on, there was an exhibition about marine litter touring in Ljubljana, in Slovenia, where I live. I took my kids, and I saw these microscopic images of microfibers, and to me, they looked so much like the spirulina under the microscope. So I thought to myself, maybe the same filter we designed for her, for spirulina, could actually work for washing machines. And it did. And this is how our first very primitive prototype of the filter was born. And this is how Planet Care was born. I have put my heart, soul, and all my savings into it. So our mission is to stop microfiber pollution with an efficient, practical, and affordable solution. It needed to be efficient because I wanted it to work. I wanted to go beyond conscience clearing. There are a lot of products out there that are great for awareness. I won't name them but they don't actually do the job. We needed something that worked. And it needs to be affordable and practical because you want it widely used. And the only way it's going to be widely used is if it's affordable and practical. Our filters are independently tested to capture 90% of the fibers. We have been tested by the CNR in Naples, the Institute of Chemistry in Ljubljana, and most recently by the Swedish Environmental Agency. They have actually voted our filter as the best solution on the market. Today we have an external filter that's intended for domestic use, commercial filter that's intended for laundries and hospitality industry, and an industrial filter that's intended for large textile plants. We are the only solution out there that is completely circular. Because to me, it made no sense to capture three grams of microfibers and throw away 300 grams. That would be ridiculous. So we designed a return and reuse scheme for cartridges, which allows us to reuse, really reuse, 95% of the cartridge, and 5%, which is actually the filter medium with the fibers caught in there, we recycle for insulation panels. We are the first solution ever to be awarded the Ocean Clean Wash Quality label by the Plastic Soup Foundation. Plastic Soup Foundation uh, has supported us and guided us from the start, 
and I'm so grateful to them. Maria, Harm, and Laura, they are great. And whenever, whenever I would be down, and I did get down occasionally, I would remember Maria, her relentless energy, her will, her strong will to carry on. Somebody once said that if she would be a battery, she would fuel a city. You agree with me, probably the ones who know her. Uh, so I would get back, back up again with her help. The reason I would get down sometimes was that two years ago when I started this, and I was touring the world explaining about our solution and the problem, rarely somebody knew about microfibers, microplastics, problem. Today, that's more mainstream. But even the ones who knew what the problem was kept saying to me that nobody is going to buy the filter because it's not for them, it's for the planet. And people need solutions that are for them, that make their lives easier, not that are saving the planet. But I can tell you today, we have just started a sales campaign with our partner G-Star here in the Netherlands at the Plastic Soup Foundation, and I can tell you that there are actually people out there who are willing to pay for it, thanks God. I still know each and every one by name, so we haven't quite reached our sales targets. Uh, but we're getting there organically, every day, we're growing, and I'm very optimistic. And, you know, you tell your neighbor, the neighbor tells his neighbors and the relatives. So, you know, it's, uh, it's moving. We're creating a community. The users are very happy. The first feedbacks are very positive. So I'm sure we're getting there. Um, also, we're quite successful with our commercial filter. We have a great partner in the States, the Green Earth Cleaner, um, Cleaning. They are actually a company who has over 2,000 affiliates for dry cleaners all over the world. And we are about to enter the beta testing phase with our commercial filter on 20 of their sites in California, starting November. And after that, hope to deploy them commercially through the US. Oh, and this is India. Um, we have installed our first industrial filter at an otherwise al already very sustainable textile plant. We installed it at the end, just before the water is used for irrigation. And you can see my colleague Miha, how happy he is to be in India. <laughs> it's 55 degrees in there. <laughs> He's looking very much forward to go again. So if any you know, of you want to have a project in India, he's sitting uh, there at the back. Um, I will leave you with an advice of uh, Professor Guy McPherson. I think it's uh, suited. If you think the economy is more important than the environment, then hold, try holding your breath while counting your money. Thank you.